we have many people that follow us, that read us, that have many, many questions. Um, right. I, know that, I know that you were on, on the radio this morning and you provided an update as to what's happening with the next round of uh, the stimulus checks. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, we divided the, the distribution plan into three critical phases. The first 2019 filers uh, that we are currently on an ongoing process to distribute the monies for the ones who are filing the 2019 tax return. We already issued like a, a 569 a stimulus payments to, to those uh, participants. And now we are on the process to go live with, with our second phase, uh, which is the 2018 filers. Why the difference? Because uh, 2018 was filed in uh, an old system and we don't ha we didn't have all the information needed to process uh, the payment simultaneously with the 2019 filers uh, we will go live uh, this 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 week uh, we will announce the exact date uh, in the probably uh, during today or Wednesday and we will issue this uh, link for the taxpayer to go uh, without the need of uh, having an account in our tax administration system called SURI to uh, inform the bank account information so we can process those payments uh, so, by the end of uh -huh. Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, and the third phase uh, will be for the non-filers, which is very similar to the experience that uh, the people in the mainland has uh, with respect to the EIP uh, application process. Uh, we will go live by the end of May. Okay, now, what about the people that you know, that they, they filed the 2018 tax return and their information is there, their bank account information is there. They've been able to receive the $500, you know, aid and then the $1,000 aid over the weekend. What about those people that already have their bank account in place for the 2018 pilot? We, we were able to, to gather certain bank information from the 2018 uh, system. Uh, originally, uh, I was very... Uh, I have skepticism, if you will, uh, about that information, but after a couple of, uh, of analysis by our consultant, looks like we were able to rescue some, some of the information. Okay. Uh, my suggestion for those taxpayers is to stay tuned with the instructions that we will be issuing in the next couple of days. Uh, obviously, uh, we, can build, uh, we can build any uh, program uh, needed but however we are running against time and time is of the essence so uh, you will notice that sometimes uh, we uh, we will not be able to actually put in place a complete synchronized system because it would take us a month uh, in order to to issue those payments and that is not the purpose so sometimes we will need some push from the taxpayers uh, informing the bank accounts, even though we have the bank account for other purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, but the important thing is that once we go live, uh, our commitment is that once the uh, bank information is reported, it will be just a matter of days that we will be issuing those EIPs. So it's not the same thing then. That the, for example, over the weekend, we have I know many people that have the $1,000 deposited into their accounts that were people who hadn't filed the 2019 return, had the 2018 return instead. That information is there. What, I don't understand what the difference is, honestly. Uh, uh, our infrastructure will require additional analysis and additional synchronization process with uh, with the pro, and it would cost longer to make the proper analysis and the proper validation in order to go live. Uh, so if we add uh, more functionalities to the system, if we don't keep it simple, uh, it will get longer to be able to to go live. So sometimes uh, we go through the route of being as simple as possible uh, to go the live as soon as possible. So they're separate systems, is that what you're saying? Uh, not necessarily separate system, but uh, different uh, platforms within the system uh, because you have different accounts, tax accounts, okay. and you might require additional uh, resources to okay. synchronize within the same system. Uh, Suri is a giant. We, uh, as a as a tax administration platform, and everything is possible, uh, but it takes time. That's why we we have been very pragmatic uh, with our approach uh, to to go live as soon as possible. 
Okay, what about the people who for some reason can't get into their SUDI accounts? I've heard from many readers that they're unable to get in and they're unable to get help from the agency either over the phone or via email. They're desperately trying to resolve their, their problems. What do you yep. say to those people? Uh, that for the 2018 and 2019 filers, you don't need to be registered as a taxpayer in SUDI uh, because uh, we enable a no login process within SUDI. Uh, the link is actually out of the registration parameters uh, within SUDI. You can go to the principal page and you will see the link. So taxpayer, for example, uh, my stepfather, my stepfather filed a tax return. He doesn't have an account in SUDI and he was able to go through the no login process uh, and uh, report the bank account. The difference is that when you are using the no login approach, there's an authentication process that uh, we will need additional information from the taxpayer and uh, in order to ensure that it's the actual taxpayer, the one that is uh, uh, providing the information and, and submitting the bank account. That's why we, uh, in the questionnaire, we include certain values from the tax return uh, because uh, it increases the likelihood that is the actual taxpayer, the one that is uh, requesting the, the amounts. So people that can't get in shouldn't, um shouldn't worry is that what you're saying they're going to be able to get the money anyway for the twelve hundred dollars stimulus payments correct you don't need to have a an account in suri uh, because individuals who are not merchants they are not bound to have an account in suri uh, is uh, so, uh, we suggest everyone in puerto rico to have an account in suri but it's not required this is only for merchants that's why the self-employed professionals everything has been run within the, their SUDI accounts because they must be registered merchants uh, and we have further controls with respect to uh, fraudulent declarations. Uh, but with respect to, to the EIP process, we have been running this outside the SUDI system. Uh, we are using SUDI to process the request, but at the end of the day, the tax return can be filed using uh, external providers uh, that uh, some of them are free uh, and they can uh, submit the information without having uh, the need of uh, of having the account in SUDI. Okay, and then going back to the self-employed, there are also people, you know, telling me, telling us on our social media pages that they weren't able to get the first 500, so obviously they weren't able to get the 1,000 over the weekend because they're, uh, they're unable to get into their SUDI accounts for some reason, and they have been unable to get their problems resolved with the agency. So, you know, what kind of solution would you offer them? Uh, I estimate inst uh, with respect to the people, uh, self-employed merchants, uh, everyone needs to be a registered merchant. And the registration process is within SUDI, and, the, and this is since 2016. This is not something that we invented. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a requirement since 2016 when a uh, prior administration uh, established or commence the SURI project. Having said that, uh, we commence the $500 uh, with the registered merchants to see how the, uh, the request uh, of these funds uh, functions with, uh, over the course of the time. And now we are analyzing the ones that actually filed the 2019 return or 2018 to see if we can actually uh, invent a process to send the stimulus to them, even though uh, uh, them they, they were not uh, uh, require uh, they were not complying with law with respect to the uh, to the registration process. Our recommendation is to use a new uh, service uh, performed by Suri, which doesn't request an account. It's a link that actually is for uh, uh, sending a request of services with respect to the registration process. So there can now be we are. They can have parallel accounts, is that what you're saying? They can request to our people instead of using the email, which is very difficult to manage uh -huh. the inventory through through the email. They can request that uh, service through this platform in Suri, which doesn't uh, require a, a login process. So okay. we can invent uh, have a, a more precise inventory. And now we are also increasing the resources within the agency. We are functioning uh, uh, only with 42% of the personnel because we are switching them 
uh, in order to to observe the social distancing uh, policies established by the governor. Mm -hmm. But now we are increasing that um, and we are doing our best effort to increase the resources, uh, using external resources to increase the amount of headcount that we have for the our call centers. Okay, so for 42% to what percent? 42% uh, to close to 70%. Okay. However, there's a, a, a lot of work that was delayed Right. Uh, within the department, for example, we will not be making collection efforts and we will not be making fiscal audits in the in the close uh, future. Mm -hmm. So those uh, that personnel will be uh, focused in the distribution plan established by governor. Okay, okay. Now let me ask you real quickly, um, do you have, I read somewhere, I think maybe you said by June, the people who are, you know, recipients of the Nutritional Assistance Program, Social Security, non-filers. Did you say June for them as to when they could be receiving their stimulus check? They are non-filers. Uh, so they can uh, use the uh, third phase as the phase uh, for them to request the payments, uh, specifically the uh, food stamp uh, participants, students who live from uh, student loans who, who are not bound to file a tax return, other taxpayers that all of their income is exempt from taxation and they don't file a tax return necessarily, they can observe the third phase. However, for the social security beneficiaries who doesn't have uh, the ability to, to, to use the technology, we reach an agreement with the Social Security Administration and they will be sending us the information from the beneficiaries who has uh, address within Puerto Rico. With okay. that information, they can put us in position to provide the same service that the IRS and the Social uh, Security Administration will provide to the U.S. citizens residents of the mainland, uh, which many of them will receive the payment directly from the government without them having to issue or to file a declaration to the government. Now, can you give me dates? I know that you said that the next round is this week, right? So that's that's a little a little past mid-May, which was what had been said originally for this 2018 filers. Um, mm -hmm. Can you give me dates? Uh, I think we can. Uh, desperate. <laughs> I think we can. Uh, there's a probability that in the next couple of day, days, uh, actually we can pay directly to 2018 filers, which actually put us in the schedule of providing them close to mid-May. Uh, I always said that it was between second and third week. We are still on track on that. Uh, we are working on the go uh, with many challenges. Also, we included the uh, $1,000 program in our calendar, which was not expected three weeks ago. So certainly that's something that was managed by the department that uh, certainly affects some way or the other the, the other processes that we are running in Hacienda. However, a, a third phase will be by the end of May. I don't have a date for the social security bene beneficiaries because we are still waiting for the information uh, from the federal government. Uh, we need to see the format that the information will be provided by them, the content, and how we can synchronize that information with our information system. So. Uh, certainly it's a challenge. I don't have a critical day, but uh, I think it's reasonable that if they send information this week, that we have a communication that they will try their best effort to provide, let's say that three to four weeks uh, to make the necessary assessment of the information and synchronization process uh, might be enough time to actually uh, start issuing the payments, but that's something very preliminary uh, from, from a forecast standpoint. That sounds like mid-June. For them. Uh, for them to be hitting the bank account, yes. Okay. But there are many U.S. citizens in the mainland that haven't received their EIPs payments. Actually, there are many Social Security beneficiaries that still are waiting for the payments within the mainland. And let me tell you another story. The Virgin Islands, who reached one day before the agreement with the federal government, hasn't issued any EIPs to their residents within the Virgin Islands. So uh, obviously uh, I can understand the desperation from the people within Puerto Rico, uh, but looking at our results with respect to the territories and with respect to the uh, distribution plans agreed for prior uh, stimulus payments, like the one implemented by Barack Obama and President Bush, uh, we are far uh, uh, 
very far ahead of the uh, experience that Puerto Ricans have back then. For telling you an example, with the stimulus payments introduced by uh, President Bush administration, uh, the government of Puerto Rico uh, took like two months to reach an agreement with the Treasury and took two months uh, more to issue the first payment. Uh, we took 36 days to uh, establish the uh, distribution plan since the enactment of the CARES Act and only 13 hours to provide the first payment. So certainly we are very, very far ahead of the experience that Puerto Rican had with other distribution plans agreed with the Treasury. Let me ask you another question, and this is also from a couple of readers. Um, considering the problems that the Labor Department is having with the unemployment benefit payments, is Treasury able to step in to collaborate on that, you know, to perhaps work on expediting processing of the deposits and, and you know, helping them get the payments out? Because I, I don't know if two, the two agencies are able to work together. Uh, Department of Labor, they, they have... Uh, heck of a challenge. Uh, uh, their service request, I think uh, it was increased dramatically and exponentially. And obviously there are uh, technical aspects uh, by law that they must observe uh, within the, the process of evaluating the cases. We are not experts on that. Uh, we are expert on our topics. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, any help that the Department of Labor might request from the department, we will certainly uh, assess them and, and try our best effort to, to get things done. Uh, but certainly, I have to give all the deference to the Secretary of uh, the Department of Labor because she's the expert and their uh, team is the expert uh, to observe all the federal regulations that encompass the evaluation process of these cases that we are not experts. Okay, it just seems like you're able to get deposits directly into people's accounts versus the Department of Labor, which is sending checks, you know, paper format. So that's certainly, what people are asking. Certainly, uh, we can uh, help on direct deposits, but I guess that the Department of Labor has assessed uh, under expert how much additional time will take to reach to that level uh, because SURI is not a new thing. We have been working in SURI uh, Hacienda since 2016 uh, uh, with the first phase that commenced on October 2016 and from my personal standpoint since January 2017. So uh, we are delivering but uh, there was a big effort from the agency to digitalize the internal revenue area. Now we are seeing the dividends, mm -hmm. but certainly this was not something that came up in a blink of an eye. It, it actually took a toll from our people within Hacienda. It was certainly a challenge to administer the ongoing services while doing this uh, migration process. Finally, a reader wants to know if there is a possibility of another tax reform. Um, and another reader wants to know related to that if there are any plans for tax cuts for both corporations and for individuals? More than tax cuts, uh, I am of the vision and governor as well and the fiscal team that we need to assess if our tax code, not only from the, from the cost, which are the tax base and the uh, tax rates, but also as uh, it is uh, implemented from an operational standpoint. We certainly need to pay close attention to internet sales, which now will have more occurrence than in the past. We certainly need to promote the social distancing uh, policies uh, that will preserve our health system. And this is certainly something that affects uh, the way that Hacienda uh, administered the tax code. So certainly some changes from an operational standpoint uh, must be uh, addressed uh, and changed. Uh, and in terms of the tax base and, and the costs, which are the rates, uh, we need to pay close attention on the next couple of weeks to see how the economy uh, will try to normalize uh, with respect to our new reality, this COVID-19 reality. And we will ma make our recommendations to the Legislative Assembly and we'll do the proper coordination with the Fiscal Oversight Management Board.
So for example, the 11 and a half tax sales tax, could that be something that could be further cut to other areas? Everything needs to be uh, assessed by the government. Obviously there are certain restrictions uh, imposed by the fiscal oversight and management board, which says that any changes in the, in the tax system must be revenue neutral. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, having said that, uh, we are in the process uh, of issuing or to get a new certification of the fiscal plan and everything is on the table. I know that uh, the executive director from uh, uh, FAFA, uh, Mr. Omar Marrero, mm -hmm. has been doing a heck of a job uh, with their agency uh, and certainly they would put in place a fiscal plan that assess uh, the Puerto Rican needs. Okay, Secretary Perez, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.